Welcome to church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. What a beautiful scripture, huh? Yes. I'm going to think I, I never knew that word so until my little sister died. And uh, my brother and myself held my mother up because she had the strength. And that was the day I learned the word soul. And God's soul loved the world. Think about that. He loved you more than even Jesus. Think about that for a second. He had to go to the cross for us. That's an amazing thought. It's an amazing thought. God can work with a willing spirit. That is the title little talk today. Um, if I had a subtitle, it may be God Equips the Call. Okay? Um, we're going to talk today about working with God, for God, and through God. That is, that is the meat of the message today. But, um, you know, we just recently had appointed um, people to appoint people to do work at this church. You know, and it's um, pretty evident by, you know, just to, just general statistics that 20% um, of the people do the work of the 100% that sit around and don't do so much of the work. Okay? So, um, with that being said, I, I want to read this little thing. It's in your, it's in your bulletin. Um, it starts. It's the very first one from Spirit of Prophecy, and uh, I just I was reading it while I was sitting down, and it's it's pretty powerful. It says, "Trust the Holy Spirit to use every worthy member of the church. Neither conference officer nor minister has a call from God to indulge distrust." of God's power to use every individual who is considered a worthy member of the church. This cautiousness, so-called, is retarding almost every line of the Lord's work. God can and will use those who have not had a thorough education in the schools of men. A doubt of his power to do this is manifest unbelief. It is limiting the omnipotent power of the one with whom it nothing is impossible. Oh, for less of this unsanctified, distrustful caution. It leaves so many forces of the church unused. It closes up the way so that the Holy Spirit cannot use men. It keeps in idleness those who are willing and anxious to labor in Christ's lines. It discourages many from entering the work who would become efficient laborers together with God if they were given a fair chance. Those who would be laborers who see the great necessity for consecrated workers in the church and in the world should seek strength in the secret places of prayer. They should go forth to labor and God will bless them and make them a blessing to others. Such members would give strength and stability to the church it is the lack of spiritual exercise that makes church members so weak and inefficient. But again, I would ask, who is to blame for the state of the church that exists now? Not God. Not God. How do we accomplish working with God, brothers and sisters? That's the question I want to answer here. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever, does that mean anybody, anybody, believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In Hebrews 11.6 it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, 
and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. There's a very powerful word in there, diligently seek him. What does that mean, diligently? Energetic, painstaking, you know? There's a, there's, a, there's a very strong desire, a longing. Without that longing and desire, what is there? There's just nothingness, right? Just flat, empty, dead. There, there's two kinds of people in the world. You're either growing or you're dead, right? I mean, that's it. You've got to be grown. Period. I want to, let's just skip down here into 22. John 3 and 22. Maybe I should. Let's read John 3. This. We'll get our way to 22. For God, verse 17. For God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God's not out to get you, is he? That's not what it sounds like. If he's out to get you, it's to get you in the kingdom, right? That's what he's all about. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he, he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. You know, a cockroach doesn't like the light. It really doesn't. I mean, you turn the light on, and they just, like, disappear so quick. It's like, did I even see that? You know? But what about other kinds of bugs? They go to the light, don't they? Even a bug has enough sense to go to the light. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Wrought in God. What, is, what does the word wrought mean? Wrought in God. Done. <clears throat> Done. Finished. The work is complete. Very good word. Complete. Of God. Of God. Right. Amen. All right, here we go. I have a title over this, or a little heading. It says, Ministry in Judea, beginning in verse 22. After these things, Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and, they, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Enon, near to Salem because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was yet not cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered, and said, a man cannot can, can, can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Amen. Ye yourselves bear witness of me that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. John had the right spirit, didn't he? John had the right understanding. There's this little conflict. You know, John the Baptist's disciples were all proud for John. And they didn't like what was going on here because the people were leaving John now. Because John's work was coming to a close. <laughs> Jesus was to take the work. You know, I can't believe, I'm, even in her, the little thing you talked about before your song and everything, who did God choose to do this work? Simple men. Fishermen. Simple, Fit simple 
simple men. Not with men with great big degrees and 15,000 letters after the name. He used simple men. And simple men can carry the job so far, and then somebody else comes and carries the job further. And if we are people that are going to judge who's doing the work, we're not in a good place. Amen. Not in a good place at all. We should be lifting up all people Amen. and encouraging them in the work, showing the love of Jesus Christ as Amen. he is shown to us by this amazing life that he's lived for us yes. and this amazing gift of his death upon the cross. Yes. It, it, we have too much of the sesquillian bedellian verbiage, which is too many syllables and trying to use long words and all this garbage, you know. Um, we just need to make it easy. <laughs> Low-hanging fruit. Jesus did not make it difficult. He made the most difficult things seem so simple. And he related to the people, and the people related to him. And that's where we need to be. You know, we, we're going to have this... Um, this conference is what I like to call it, you know, a conference on liberty. And I think it's a wonderful way to bring people into the church. You know, the, the world we're living in, I, the inhumanity of man to man is, un, is unbelievable. And, and our liberties are disappearing so quickly. Jesus is our liberty, brothers and sisters. Amen. He is our liberty. Through God, the only way we're going to get this through God is if we die to self. Self is the problem. Self for you and self for me is the issue. It's the problem. Jesus didn't have that problem because he said, not I, right? Paul said, not I, but Christ. Jesus' focus was continually the Father, always in every step. He even claimed that his words were not his own words. So what does that speak to us? We are, we have, we have a decision. We either speak God's words or we speak the enemy's words. There really is no middle ground. You know? There really is no middle ground. It's really that simple. Our mandate comes from biblical authority. Does it not? Amen. All of us are under some type of authority. Biblical authority brings true freedom. Amen. True freedom. Let us read it in James 1. James 1 and 25. Right after the book of Hebrews is James all there? Amen. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the what? Work. Work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. You know, we can't take credit for anything. And I'm going to just leave this here now. I'd like to hear this long. I feel lapel. tied to the pulpit, though. You're on your lapel. I am on my lapel. All right, then this thing's gone. How, Jesus prayed to the Father, watched the Father, looking to the Father constantly. So the, the work that he did was just mirroring his Father, right? Which is the same thing that we have the benefit to do. Because if we're so focused on something or someone, that is what we become, right? It doesn't the Bible say, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he? Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't the Bible say that uh, he shall give you the desires of your heart? What if the desire of your heart 
is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. What if that is truly your desire? What, what, what do you think would happen to our obstacles? They would disappear. You wouldn't see them as your obstacles anyway, right? Because the life that you live is not yours anymore. Hallelujah. See, this is the problem we have. We look to men. We look to certain individuals and we think, well, this guy's going to do this and that guy can't do that or whatever. But that's not it at all. We need to focus on Jesus. Amen. He's going to plug everything into the right place. We have to have faith. Yeah. Faith that this, this, this conference that we're going to have is going to go off wonderfully and God's going to bless amazingly. You know, and, and we're going to have such an outpour that the next time we do this, we're going to have to have a great big ten out back. Because they're not going to fit in here. You know, the, the earth is, the, this thing is closing up. It, it's coming down to the, the, the bitter end. Abandoning this brings death and pain, even though one believes he is free. If, if, you, if you take off the authority, God's authority, and you think you're free, you're not free at all. You may feel free for a moment, but you're binding yourself. Binding yourself to death. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he makes no excuses. There is no other. Okay? You know, the framers, our, our forefathers, when they put this government together, they named Jesus Christ. And they said, you know, that was in the rough draft. They said, you know, maybe we can't do that. Maybe it's just a little too much. So they took out Jesus Christ and they put God. That just tells you where, our, where the people were that brought this country and made this country what it is, or what it was. God gives us the liberty to do what we want, but he tells us what we should to be happy. God doesn't force, He doesn't make anybody do anything. He says once again, this is the way to walk in. It. So what is our decision today? Are we going to follow Him? Are we going to listen to the Bible as the truth of God? And stop listening to man and man's opinion. Psalm 119, 45. I got it here. You don't even have to look it up. I will walk a liberty. I will walk at liberty. For I seek thy precepts. Mm -hmm. So if you're seeking God's precepts, what does that say? You're going to be walking in liberty. Right? Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't need to change. Why? Because he's perfect. Amen. He's perfect. He's holy. He's just. He's true. Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus taught the people as one having authority. You know, and it upset the scribes and the Pharisees, didn't it? He didn't attend their schools. He was, as they saw it, stealing their people. Hmm. Right? They were losing their power because the, the whole world was going after Jesus. They didn't recognize him. Did they not recognize him? They're supposed to be teachers of the law and they don't recognize him? How can it be? How can it be? Can we become so educated that we become stupid? Yes. 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 
you know, when Harvard was first put together, you know what their main book was? Think of where they are today. Makes you just want to cry. You know, it's sad. It's just sad. Let's turn to Isaiah 57-15. Um, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite ones. Sounds like Jesus is on your side, doesn't it? What is he looking for? Us to be humble yeah. and admit that we need help. Because he's humble. Exactly. But we're not brought up that way, are we? We're brought up in a total different way. Culture. Do we adapt to culture or does culture adapt to scripture? Stop and think about that for a minute. Really. I mean, what if uh, what if we converted some headhunters and some uh, cannibalists, right? You know, like, like but but you know it's it's my culture to eat people. So we say, well, yeah, I get it, okay. So, why don't you just pray over your victim before you eat them? Right? It's culture. What about the Quran? What if, what if somebody comes into the church and they're going to be, they're, they're a Muslim? So we'll have, we'll have the Quran at 10 o'clock, and then we'll have the Bible at 12 o'clock. Because that's your culture? Does this stuff make you uncomfortable? <laughs> Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What about, um, what about Sunday? Why don't we just have church on Sunday? Because it's the custom of the Catholic Church. Versus Saturday. Which is of the Bible. It's my culture, right? It's not God's work. So, so what has authority? Is the question. What begs the, the question? Is this not the authority? Or does culture have the authority? What did, what did the uh, scribes and Pharisees have a problem with Jesus? Was their tradition. Amen. Right? It's their tradition. Their culture. Jesus, they did not line up with Scripture. You know, in the very end, brothers and sisters, the truth and the deception will go hand in hand. They will be so close that the only way that you will be able to tell is if you know this very, very well. Amen. They're coming in the very trying times. Very very trying times. The Lord Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. He wants to see every one of you be with Him. Amen. Our closing song is 287.
something, so I'm probably funny when it's good. Anyways, um, you know, if we want to if we want to work with God through God, we need to we need to just die to self. It's not judging one another. It's learning to put our hand out to everybody, even the ones we disagree with. You know, because time is short.